Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin, and today I'm going to show you Levinix Beta 3, just released today. So to get it, all you do is you go to Google and you search on Levinix. I'll usually be the very top result, so you click there, and then you click the download link. Now on the Mac, the download is going to automatically uh, download and unzip. So you'll get it out of your download directory when it's finished. It's only a uh, about a 20 megabyte file, so it actually comes down pretty quickly. Uh, we are a quarter of the way done already. It's downloading from GitHub, which is the reason for the hyphen master. Uh, it's the uh, master branch of the Linux repository. And uh, I'll also be demonstrating this process on Ubuntu Linux 12.04 and on Windows XP, but it works just as well on Windows 7 and 8. And so as soon as this is done, you'll see the unarchive sort of auto magically happen. It's up to about 23 megabytes. I'll get that down back to about 20. There's the unarchive, so now if I go into the downloads directory, you'll see it there. I will just drag it onto the desktop. And then we'll go in there. And on the Mac, it's easy to see which icon to click. It's just the one that has the icon. If I go to big icons, it'll look nice and pretty. Um, Linux people will do the .sh file, and Windows people the .vbs file. So we double click that, and it says it cannot be open. The trick on the Mac is you just right click and you go open, and you approve it. That's what happens the first time you download things uh, off of the web. And now the magic happens. This is the first time Linux is booting on from this archive, so it's going to actually go through a quick little server build. You'll see that in a second. It's pulling stuff over from the Macintosh side into this tiny little virtual machine, building both an SSH server and a web server. And what does that mean? Well, if I open my web browser back up and uh, make it a little bit smaller. You will see if I go to the site localhost 8080, this little instruction page is being served right from this server. And you can see I have this kind of uh, text enticing you in. This is your last chance. After this, there's no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, and you believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Well, the blue pill is building just Pipulate, a free and open source package for SEO and social media uh, tracking and monitoring and eventually a full suite of software to help you uh, build and grow your audience reach and participation. But that's a story for another day. You also have exit to login, where it says, better yet, uh, telnet into this location. What, what? Well, if you are on the Macintosh, you have something called the terminal. This is a Unix terminal, and I can actually go SSH TC at localhost P2222. 2222. And this is an introduction to sort of old school uh, programming, or at least getting into your machine to do old school programming, which is the next step in Linux. And, oh, password. Oh, well, there you go. Password foo. Foo. What, what? Ah, more text that sort of invites you in uh, to do further. I tell you at the end of this type to do an ls, you can see what's there. Drink me? Hmm, that sounds interesting. 
drinkme.sh. Nope, can't be found, so it's dot slash drinkme.sh. And I explain that in the text above there. Enter. Hmm, more text. Okay, yeah, yeah. Enter one to exit or two to install Vim. I'll start the Vim install just so that you can kind of see what's going on here with this new version. This is what Beta 3 is all about. I'm enticing you into different areas of both Pipulate and Levinix. And you can either just use Pipulate for what it's for, or you can sort of take the dive and chase the rabbit down the rabbit hole and learn yourself some Linux. So while that's building, I'll go over here and demonstrate the process, how it's so similar on each different desktop. I'll pull the archive out here, and I'll jump in here, and you want to double-click the .sh file when you're on uh, Linux, and I click Run in Terminal. Hmm. Well, this is starting to look familiar. And while that's going on, I'll jump over here to Windows. Same story. Pull that out. And you will notice there is no install. You're just unarchiving a file from a zip. You're unzipping a file. And once it's unzipped, with no install or no admin rights, you're just double-clicking a file. And on Windows, it's the .vbs. And on Windows, you might have these things to, uh, to, to approve, like allow this to do uh, network talking. Because remember, this is running as a little web server, and it needs to allow traffic into the virtual machine uh, from the desktop. So there will occasionally be permissions either to allow you to execute a file that you downloaded from the web or to allow network communication through a firewall. So meanwhile, you can see this is built. You can see the final stages of this being built. And it's all pretty much identical. Pipulate on Windows. Linux, or Mac desktops. Exit, I log out, close out of this. And just to let you see here, you get an identical platform where code runs exactly the same way, no matter what platform you're on. And one of the great things about this is it actually works the very same way uh, from a USB keychain drive or Dropbox. You can literally have the same development code execution environment traveling with you from machine to machine, uh, regardless of host operating system, really for the rest of your life. And if Linux alone isn't enough, I compel you forward on in an education through the Linux platform uh, the Python programming language, the Vim text editor, and the Git distributed code versioning system. And between those four elements of this platform, you have a whole alternative old school approach to technology that is unlikely to ever go obsolete because it's kind of like the pee in the pool of tech. It's never going away and it will serve you the rest of your life. Uh, no matter what other more sexy technologies you take up, like JavaScript and Node.js and mobile programming, this can always be in your back pocket and always useful because it is the core technology that's right under the hood of almost all modern computers and electronic devices with embedded computers. So thanks for joining me. Uh, I look forward to this adventure as I lead everyone down the rabbit hole exploring all the various aspects that this has to offer. And I hope to see you again soon and don't forget to subscribe.